Now for Global Business Updates, Rotus Odiri joins us. Good morning, Rotus. Good morning, Dr. Abati. Good morning, Vimbai. Good morning, Rufai. Good morning to all our viewers. We're discussing three Rotus, things today, geopolitical tiny, concerns, though. technology, and monetary policy. Uh, so, yeah, thank you, Rufai. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, um, first off, great interview uh, with Mr. Kunam, the security expert. Um, it's not just Nigeria that is facing these issues. We saw what happened uh, in Russia uh, not too long ago. And I guess the conversation now is how countries are reacting. France um, has raised its terror threat to the highest level. What happens when these terror threats go up? Businesses get nervous. People who are planning to fly into certain countries probably hold back because of what happened with ISIS-K, which has been identified and taking responsibility for the terrible um, uh, attack that happened uh, in, uh, in Russia at that theater. So Gabriel Attal, who used to be former education minister, was made prime minister of France uh, in January of uh, this year. And there's a tweet from him. It's translated into English where um, this was like yesterday evening or so. He said that because of what happened um, in uh, Russia, France has now raised its terror threats uh, to the highest level. So everybody is on alert uh, at this point. Um, you had a great conversation talking about um, uh, the Nigerian security forces. And basically, the conversation now is around intelligence and intelligence gathering. Um, uh, Nigeria's security has the, as far as defense, it has the highest allocation in the budget, right? And so the question now is when we're assessing intelligence, Vimbai asked the question, how do you move so many children over how many hundreds of kilometers and no things? Dr. Abati was talking about, I um, mean, his question to the guest, how the military is understaffed and overstretched. We've been talking about state police. What do these things mean? It means you want a bigger government. It means that the conversation or the, the um, discussion around whether Nigeria's government is too big is not, is not soon with the evidence, right? If you want state police, if you want more military, you have to get a bigger government. So the issue now is about efficiency. And look, intelligence has been the conversation this weekend. Here is uh, Senator Tim uh, Kaine. Tim Kaine uh, is, sits on the U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He was also the vice presidential candidate of uh, Hillary Clinton in the 2016 U.S. Uh, election. Here he is, again, reiterating the fact that U.S. intelligence almost to the letter predicted that this attack was going to happen and warned Russian um, authorities on March the 7th. They, they highlighted embassies, concerts, movie theaters, and so on. Here is, he was on the weekend, I think on Fox News, talking about it. Well, Shannon, first, uh, my heart goes out to the families in Russia that were affected by this. Um, the U.S. did warn Russia, and Vladimir Putin gave a speech on Tuesday discounting the warning, saying we were trying to meddle and create confusion. We also warned Iran a couple months ago about, about a potential attack by ISIS-K there. If you want to know the difference between democracies and authoritarians, we will tell nations if we're worried about their civilians. Russia or Iran would never tell us if they had news that there was going to be a terrorist attack in the United States. So that's Tim Kaine, and that's over in the U.S. In the U.K., the finance minister was talking about geopolitical issues and security. Jeremy Hunt, uh, the chancellor of the Exchequer, he was on Sky News. He was asked about you know, the France raising the terror threats to its highest level. And he says, you know, is UK, he was asked whether UK intelligence is prepared. Here he is praising UK intelligence. Absolutely. And uh, we are very lucky in this country that we have incredibly impressive intelligence agencies who have been successful in stopping, uh, in foiling a lot of terrorist threats over recent years but we have to remain vigilant and uh, you know if it is Islamic State they are utterly indiscriminate uh, in what they do um, they're prepared to murder in the most horrific way and so that's why I think our hearts go out to everyone who's affected by this wherever they are in the world and yes we have to make sure that we're on our guard okay 
All right, so we move from uh, intelligence over to technology. Uh, Apple, of course, has been, you know, they're dealing with a lawsuit. Maybe they released these images in order to divert attention, but the Apple Vision Pro, we got new uh, images, new demonstrations on how the Apple Vision Pro is going to revolutionize education. Your first video you should be seeing on your screen is uh, somebody with a biology textbook that is looking at the human heart. They are using the Apple Vision Pro to look to analyze the human heart. I mean, with the way all of us learned about the human heart in biology class was to read about it with an image in a textbook. And then if we're lucky enough, our school had a lab where you could maybe, you know, take a little knife and tear it open. But with the Apple Vision Pro, you can see this individual, the textbook is on his lap. He is now able to move the human heart around. He's able to expand it, you know, minimize it and so on and so forth. This is where education uh, is going. Next up, I'm going to keep quiet for a second. I'm watch, uh, you, I want you to watch the Apple Vision Pro teach somebody how to play piano. Watch the colored lines that are falling on the keys of the piano as this person plays. So look, there is a widening gap. I mean, these things, the Apple Vision Pro, remember, it costs $3,500, right? So um, whether schools make parents pay for it or you, they increase tuition fees in order to accommodate them in particular classes, the education gap is growing. I mean, we are here talking about students dealing with kidnapping. In other climes, they are taking education to the next. There were so many more videos. There was one where it actually opens up a, I think it was a POS machine or something. It, the guy was able to expand it and now take each individual piece and part. There are so many ways in which this machine can be used and it's just taking education to the next level. Finally, for Africa, um, we've got three central bank decisions uh, between today and Wednesday. Today is Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison at the Bank of Ghana. They suspected that Ghana will likely hold interest rates where they are. We'll see what, uh, what happens there. On Tuesday, we've got uh, Yemi Cardoso and the Monetary Policy Committee. Remember, we just had a rate hike on February the 27th. So this is less than a, a month later, or just about a month. I think we're going to get another hike because we've seen inflation continue to climb. And the Central Bank of Nigeria wants to keep the real rates of return as, as minimized as possible, at least as far as, you know, um, getting, keeping the, the NPR as close to the inflation rate, which is above, you know, it's at 30% now, your NPR is at 22.75. So maybe we get another, maybe 200 basis points. Maybe they might hold. I mean, the debate has been going on. Some say they'll probably hold, but inflation keeps galloping. And then on Wednesday, uh, Leseta Haniego of the South Africa Reserve Bank, um, they will be making their decision I think we might see a, a hole there, although the most recent print of inflation from South Africa, it ticked up a little bit. So the African Central Banks are, you know, are under the microscope this week. I mean, uh, the debate has been raging on some school of thought are saying the rate hike initially was too high and everything. But I mean, when it goes back to the textbook way of fighting inflation, you just need to put up those rates out there. Uh, so there's a school of thought. Some are saying we're probably going to hold some are saying definitely we are going to increase. I, I think I'm for the school of thought that we still need to raise interest rates because we need to fight inflation. I mean, inflation, when you look at the real impact on human beings, it's very crazy, Rotus. A pack of chicken, somebody was telling me the other day, they bought at 35K, has gone up to over 42 or 43,000 naira. And that's how severe things as regards, you know, inflation. You know, it's so mammoth. The other day I was, I was, I was just putting out the pop quiz and I was asking, how much is a sachet of, uh, of uh, sachet water, which popularly known as pure water? The last time I remember the price of this was about 5, 10 naira. Now it's gone up to close to 50 naira for one sachet. Or they say in some places it's two for 50 naira. That's the level of inflation. It's unprecedented. Although some prices are coming down, take for instance the price of cement and all of that, but it doesn't stop the fact that inflation is still galloping. I, I hear cement from about 13,000 is about... 10,000 in some places or 11,000 in some places now. But overall, you will still see that mark. I think Bismarck Rwanda recently put a chart of, you know, six major commodities, yam and things like that. 
And there was still a big level of inflation around these things. I hear rice is coming down, but when you look at it on the grand scheme of things, that's needed to increase. As regards technology, I'm always excited when you bring all these things like Apple Vision Pro and everything, you know, because it's going to revolutionize learning. But the question is, are we ready for those things in our classrooms? And what I probably think will be the future is that definitely, according to Moore's law, the price of Apple Vision things like this will definitely increase because, you know, like Moore's law says, you know, as technology increases and, and the technology behind the chip, you know, becomes readily available, I think definitely it should be able to decrease in the price so that it can be affordable for all. But we also need to start looking at how we can develop the tech ecosystem because the world is leaving us behind. Absolutely. Now, on technology, uh, uh, just as Rufai finished on that, on a lighter note, you know, and I know some of us used to lie to our parents about how our protractor has finished. Our kids are going to have so much fun telling us about how all these gadgets have run out of whatever and we need to send more money. But now to central banks, to South Africa specifically, of course, we know that Seshe Khanako has just been appointed for a third five-year term, which is huge because we know we're just about two months away from a very important election for South Africa's ruling party, A. ANC. Uh, South Africa is going through load shedding. South Africa is also going through water shedding. Uh, you know, it's a very tough time for the country's ruling party who have ruled since Nelson Mandela. And this is the first election where it's argued that potentially they may lose their majority grip on power. So appointing a reappointment of, uh, of the central bank governor, who's most likely, as you said, going to hold rates uh, is, a, you know, just a sign to the voting public that, listen, we're trying to maintain stability as much as we can. The Reserve Bank is working for the greater part, so let's not rock, rock a boat uh, that's working. So interesting development, and uh, of course uh, we look forward to that uh, announcement from Khanyaho. Okay, <clears throat> let's talk about threat to global peace. I think what happened, you know, in Moscow uh, last Friday was definitely, you know, a wake-up call for different uh, parts of the world. And uh, France has every reason because they had a similar incident in 2015 when, you know, concert goers were also killed uh, in, uh, in uh, France that year. And now this year, in July, France is going to host uh, the Olympics, the Paris Olympics. So with the Islamic State, you know, uh, attacking people in, uh, in uh, Moscow, um, you know, it makes sense that uh, France will raise terror threats to the highest level. And, you know, they have three levels in France. Now they've gone to the highest level, which means that there'll be more patrols, you know, there'll be more uh, monitoring of uh, public places ahead of the Olympics. And it's not just France. U.S. and Japan, you know, they are raising the level of cooperation, uh, you know, between the two countries in terms of greater cooperation. And, of course, in this particular case, China is, uh, you know, the country that the U.S. and Japan are looking at. The U.K., you know, as a, uh, is spending an additional 763 million pounds, you know, for <laughs> nuclear capabilities, including Trident. So that's what they are looking at. So you see that the world is becoming more and more unsafe. And unfortunately, the threat is, you know, uh, to global peace. In Nigeria, of course, we've seen what we're facing with terrorism and banditry. And, you know, it, it should also be a wake-up call for Nigeria to know that there is a lot more that we need to do in terms of securing this environment. And that was the last paragraph in the president's statement when, you know, he was uh, uh, commenting on the uh, uh, kidnapped people that have now been uh, rescued. We should go beyond rhetoric to know that the entire world is not even safe. About the central bank, the uh, MPC in Nigeria was very hawkish in February. And you know, today, tomorrow, they will have an opportunity to assess what they were able to achieve. Well, there's been an improvement in, uh, in uh, foreign portfolio investment. The Naira, the volatility of the Naira has been reduced. The uh, Central Bank of Nigeria has been able to pay FX backlog and all of that. So maybe, you know, the uh, Monetary Policy Committee is going to... Uh, you know, think, oh, well, we were hawkish in February. Let's be even more hawkish uh, in March. After all, at the February meeting, there were some members who were recommending, you know, 450 basis points. The CBN governor himself, Cardoso, wanted 425 basis points. And I've seen some reports, uh, you know, recommending maybe 200 basis points at the March meeting. But we will know uh, tomorrow. But the question will be, increasing NPR, will it do anything to headline inflation? With food inflation, 
you know, are so high. Rufai was citing the example of a, a sachi water. Even basic things like fish, like cereals, like, you know, uh, basic uh, food items, you know, inflation, food inflation is over 37%. But we'll be able to know. But I guess the uh, Monetary Policy Committee in Nigeria may, you know, be a bit more uh, hawkish again. So that, that's, that's what I think, you know. So thank you very much, uh, Richard.